Hi, Rockstar Agents. Uh, your coach, Elisa Wilcox here. Right now I am somewhere in Italy living my best life and really having um, a life by design, right? This is why we do what we do. This is why we work hard so we can do the things that really matter most to us. So I'm going back to my roots from where my great grandma Elisa was originally born before she immigrated to America to start a life here in America. So I cannot wait to uh, come back and tell you guys all about it and share pictures and stories about the beautiful adventures that me and my sister are gonna have there in Italy or that we are currently having as you're watching this video. So what we are going to talk about today is as you know, it is the fourth quarter of 2022. And the question that I have for you is, how can you bring extra intensity and intentionality to your fourth quarter of 2022 to end the year strong, but also to boost into 2023 and start off that first quarter um, with really the business that you want, want to create. So we're gonna go through the five jobs of a real estate agent. And there are times, right, in, in life, and especially in coaching, where we might hear the same things over and over again. And the reason we do that is one, because we know these are things that work, right? And two, you are a different person every time you hear them. Your business is a different business. You are at a different place in life, both personally and professionally. And sometimes we just need to be reminded of the basics, especially as we're in a shifting market, right? We know what works. We do not need to reinvent the wheel, but we do need to make sure that we are really focused on what works for your business and that we're bringing intentionality and intensity to each one of those activities. So first, as we know, your number one job, your one thing is lead gym. So what does that look like to you specifically? All of you have been in the business for a while, you know um, what works for your business. Hopefully we have gained clarity already on your 80-20, because what we know is 20% of your activities are going to lead to 80% of your business. Relook at your GPS right now and double check, am I really focused on the 20% activities that are gonna bring in 80% of my business? How can you double down on that? So as you're doubling down on those activities, and you're really clarifying what's working, what's not working, you will have to increase your time block for those activities as well. So what can you do to really come in strong here at the end of the year with lead generation specifically? Again, lead gen is the activities we do that, are, that help us basically build relationships. So what we're looking to do is to get to know, get to know people, have people that know you, like you, and trust you. So goal for Legion is build relationships. Percentage-wise, it is 6%, roughly 6.4% of the population that is going to be in the market at any given point in time. So however you're, you're planning on Legioning in order to meet people, in order to build relationships so that you are the first person they think of when they think of real estate so that when they are in the market, you're the person they call. So what are you doing? What are you doing to have conversations with people that right now you had no idea that they were in the market for real estate? That's your lead gen. That's your one thing. That's your number one job as an agent. Next is lead follow-up. Some of you guys know I am on a one-person mission to change this terminology from lead follow-up to good customer service. So here's our competition. When we think about our business as business owners, our competition is not the other agents in the hallway. Our competition is not even other brokerages or other agents that are out there in the city of San Antonio. Our competition is our client's idea of excellent service. So our competition, when we are serving our clients, is the Ritz-Carlton. Our competition is Nordstrom. Our competition is what 
do our clients define as excellent service? So as we think about that, think about what some a purchase that you've made recently. So any purchase that you've made that was more than $500, when you walked into the store, however you engaged in purchasing this, um, what did you expect as far as customer service? What were you looking for? Were you looking for a salesperson that was knowledgeable? What about somebody who would follow up with you? Somebody that answered your questions? Somebody that listened to what you were looking for in the product? So we recently bought a new computer um, and when we walked into Best Buy and we wanted help, it was a $1,000 purchase. But that's exactly what we were expecting. We were expecting a salesperson just to engage with us, to follow up with us, to be knowledgeable about the products, to care about what we were looking for. Like if we walked in and we said, I want a computer and he started showing us TVs, man, I'm out the door. Like just ask us questions. We know, we don't know everything that we're looking for, but we know what our, what our goals are, what we're intending to do. We're looking for good customer service. That is the exact same thing that our leads are looking for when they work with, with a great agent, right? So they expect and they deserve good customer service. So change, change the story. Change it from I have to do lead follow-up, I'm trying to capture people, to I am gonna provide Ritz-Carlton level service. So forget about good customer service. You guys are not good agents, you guys are great agents. You guys are mega agents. You guys are the agents that raise the bar on what customer service is. So I ask you, how are you gonna bring additional intentionality and intensity to great customer service for all the people that have walked into your real estate business, raised their hand and said, I am interested in real estate. Whether it's today, whether it's in six months, whether it's in a year, they raised their hand and they said, I'm, I'm interested. So one, lead generation. That's people that were just building relationships. We have no idea if they're interested in real estate. Two, great customer service. These are the people that walked into our open house. These are the people that after our lead generation calls, they said, yeah, actually I was interested in, in finding out what my house is worth because we may want to downsize or we may want to upsize. So these are the people that have raised their hand and said, hi, I'm here, I'm interested, I'm shopping in some capacity. I am part of that 6% of the population that's looking to make a move. What kind of customer service are you going to provide? So the statistics around this one alone are astounding. So listen to this. 48% of salespeople never follow up with a prospect at all. So that means that that person who's looking to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars, right? Again, I, I was telling you about us spending $1,000 on a computer. What, what, what do you think I expect when I'm spending $100,000, $200,000, $500,000, maybe even a million dollars, right? This is one of the biggest purchases that people are going to make. It's, the, it's one of the wisest investments, it's the best use of funds that they can do, and it's gonna be one of the largest purchases. Do you know anybody that has anything that they have purchased that was more expensive than their home? Probably not. So as you're thinking about the great customer service you're gonna provide, it is absolutely jaw-dropping that 48% statistically, on average, of salespeople never call that person back even one single time. So I ask you again, what is your commitment to provide great customer service to these 6% of people that walk through your real estate door, raise their hand and said, I am interested in making the largest purchase of my life and what I expect is a Ritz-Carlton level service for however many hundreds of thousand dollars purchase that they're work, working toward doing. And this is a big deal, guys, and it is completely different than trying to capture leads or, you know, I mean, just um, bugging people or all the other things that we start to tell ourselves. Your customers, your clients that are looking to buy a home, they deserve great customer service. Don't you agree? So next go on appointments. This 
one is pretty straightforward. Most people I know don't really mess up going on appointments. Um, but think about what can you do while you're there? How can you take that one level higher? Can you do social media feeds while you're there? Can you um, show up 15 minutes before your buyers show up and do a Facebook Live really fast and just tour the property before, before anybody gets there? How can you take going on appointments, an activity that we have to do all the time in this business and just get a little bit extra out of it? How can you really raise the bar in the area of going on appointments? Can you do anything more efficiently, more effectively? So think about that. Next is negotiate. Thankfully, it's not spelling in, uh, in real estate. Negotiate contracts. So there is an update coming up soon with the tri contract. So um, I think it comes out in November. Garrett's going to be teaching a class. But knowing the contract can be one of the greatest skills that you can have as an agent. So when was the last time you just sat down and read the contract? Read the third party finance agenda? Like, do you really know the contract inside and out? What can you do to raise the bar on that? Because knowing the contract sometimes can be the easiest way to negotiate for your clients against somebody who, um, you know, maybe they have false, I false ideas about like what, what something is. Or they say, hey, I want to take out, um, you know, the, the appraisal um, addendum or they don't understand the three boxes on the appraisal addendum. And that can be a powerful tool for your clients that you can use simply by knowing the contract. Um, Never Split the Difference is one of the best books I've read for negotiation. And it's, it's truly a powerful book about just how, how important it is to just press in and lean in on getting comfortable, being uncomfortable when we have to have hard conversations. And as the market's shifting, honing this skill right here is gonna be really, really powerful. Sometimes it's negotiating with our own clients, right? It's, it's knowing the contract, but it's also you know, negotiating with your own clients so that they understand the, the process of buying and selling. Um, what do you say? Service is my passion, but providing great um, contract support is, is our mission, right? So as agents, we have to know that contract. So how can you take, how can you raise the bar on that? How can you come with additional intentionality and intensity to understand and know the contract for your clients. And finally, script and role play. So what is one script that would be fantastic to add to your repertoire? Like what is one thing that you just wish you were a little bit stronger on? And there is no Buddy on the planet that cannot benefit from still continuing with scripts and role play. I do it myself. I literally have a script time, time block every single week to script and role play with a partner. I also still practice my scripts on my phone. I, I've told you guys this quite a few times. Um, what I do is I record my scripts on my phone using an app called Voxer. Once I say it perfectly, then I can listen back to it over and over and over again. And that app again is Voxer, it's V-O-X-E-R. And um, once I have it and I'm able to listen to it consistently over and over again, then when I get in front of somebody, I already know the script. I'm not reading it for the first time when I go to do script and role play. But who, who do you know? And a lot of you guys are very experienced agents, you're mega agents. Who could you help? Who could you mentor and also raise the bar for yourself, right? So if it's a newer agent, say, hey, I would love to script and, and role play with you. That way you can really help them get better at their craft and at the same time you're getting better at yours. I mean, the best way to learn anything is actually to teach it. Um, when you get out there and you're having to do it with somebody else, and then the other thing that I do is I do it in front of the mirror. And it feels strange, it feels silly, but I'll tell you what, until you can look at yourself in the eye in a mirror you're able to see your body language, you're able to see how confident you are in presenting this, you don't have your script in front of you, you are ready to go, and you look yourself in the eye and you say, absolutely there's not another agent on the planet that I would work with other than you because you're confident, you know what you're talking about, and you know your scripts, then you're good to go. 
the thing is, is with scripts and role play, if you're not practicing, then you are practicing in front of your clients. And that could be, I mean, that could be tens and tens of thousands of dollars worth of mistakes. I mean, unless you are batting a thousand, unless every single buyer appointment you go on, you get, and every single listing appointment you go on, you get a 100% conversion rate, every single phone call you get, you get that lead, every single thing you do, you're getting it, then there's, then there's always room for continued scripts and mastery. And even if you have it all, then just take it to the next level. Maybe you want to start doing a uh, downline script, build your downline at KW. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what script you're needing in your life, but think about it. What new thing could you be bringing into your life that would help elevate your business? The great thing about scripts and role play is they just make you more efficient and more effective. So instead of kind of fumbling through what you're gonna say, it's like, man, you just, you just hit the nail on the head every single time. Efficiency. If you can cut your number of leads in half, because that's what's gonna happen with, with the shift too, right? We either need to increase our number of leads or we need to get a lot more effective at making sure every lead that comes in, we're capturing, right? Every buyer that we interact with, if, they're, if they've been fed a, a whole um, bunch of fear from the media, a bunch of like fear and wanting to wait, sit on the fence, what are we gonna say to that? What's the script that we're gonna tell them and how good are we at delivering that? What about sellers? Oh, you know, I don't think I want to sell now because interest, I'm, I'm at a 2% interest rate and now it's 6%. What are you going to say to that? I can promise you there's room for you to get, to get new scripts and new role play. I'm going to include a couple of new scripts specifically related to the shift. And if you do not have one already that you've identified that you really want to focus on, then that's the one that you're going to focus on. And we can talk about it when I get back. So just to recap, Your job as a top tier 1% of the number one Keller Williams in the world agent in the city of San Antonio is number one, you're going to get out there, you're gonna meet people and build relationships. That's number one. Number two, once you meet them and you find out they are in the market for real estate, you're gonna provide great Ritz-Carlton, Nordstrom, BMW, Lamborghini level, customer service. Think of the best customer service you have ever received and raise the bar on it. You're gonna go on appointments and you're gonna figure out how, how can I take going on appointments to the next level? How can I get some, some photos? How can I add some social media? How can I tell the story of what I do with going on appointments? People are curious. Why do you think HGTV has such great ratings? It's a ton of shows about agents showing people houses and then picking which one they pick. So create a story around that. Create some buzz, negotiate contracts, learn the new contract, study the contract, reread it, and make this your superpower. It is such a powerful one. And finally, scripts and role play. Who are you gonna meet with? When are you gonna do it? Unless it's on your calendar, it is not gonna happen. Intention, the smallest action beats the best intention every single time. So put it on your calendar for 10 minutes a day. 10 minutes a day, every day, all year long, you will have more script practice than probably 99% of the agents out there. I believe in you, you can do it. Create the life that you wanna live and uh, really just think about how you're gonna double down and add these things to your calendar so that you can bring extra intensity and intentionality to the fourth quarter of 2022 and charge into 2023 strong. We got this. I believe in you and I will see you next week.